31, I just want to take a moment before we start example three to show you this, this giant chart, this trait, comparison of the traits for different families of functions that I put together for you. And I'm also going to show you where you can find it. But let's start unpacking what this, this is going to help you with. And this will help you with both chapters five and six. So in examples one and two that we just saw for, for this section, we started talking about power functions, which is great. But in example three, we're going to push beyond power functions and go to polynomial functions. So polynomial functions are going to be a bunch of power functions added together or added or subtracted. So we're going to look at po uh, polynomial functions in chapter five, in the first part of chapter five. And then we're going to look into rational functions during the second half of chapter five. And a rational function, again, there's that word ratio in it. It's a fraction. It's always got fractions in it. And it's got a polynomial on the numerator and a polynomial on the denominator. So these first two columns will play themselves out in chapter five. When we move on to chapter six, we're going to start looking at exponential and logarithmic functions. All right, so first half, of, first half of chapter six, about the second half of chapter six, so exponentials and logs. And the reason we're looking at these different families is it's one of the main ideas behind any pre-calc class. And I know we're called college algebra, but this is the class before calculus. What one of the main goals for students, or that teachers have for students, coming out of pre-calculus is to say, well, if I gave you a function, could you have some idea about what the shape of its graph would be? And could you tell me some traits? And the traits that we're interested in, at least on the pre-calc level, we love talking about domains, the intercepts, both X and Y. We like talking about end behavior, vertical asymptotes if we have them, holes if we have them. We love talking about the range, and then we want an idea of what the shape of the graph looks like. So could you tell me what the graph would look like? Uh, now, when it comes to domain, we've talked about this a little bit before. There are always three domain issues in math. There are fractions, where the denominator is zero. There are radicals, when we have an even index and a negative radicand. And then there are logarithms, where your argument is zero or negative. So as you scroll through these, these four types of functions and polynomials, they're safe. There's no fractions, there's no radicals, there's no logs. That's why the domain's all real numbers. All right, rational functions, well, they have fractions in them. So we will have domain issues when we get there. Exponentials, again, no fractions, no radicals, no logarithms. We're safe. That's why I put usually all real numbers. I can tweak it a little and make it a little bit odd. We'll save that for chapter six. And then logarithms, they do have issues, all right? We can't take the log of a zero or a negative number. So you see me saying that the argument cannot be negative or zero. An argument is just whatever's in those parentheses. Now we're gonna get to these last three later on. I wanna focus on the polynomials, all right? That's the stuff that we're gonna head into in this section. And like I said, the first half of chapter five. We've talked about X and Y intercepts, right? To find a Y intercept, you let X equal zero. To find an x-intercept, you let y equal zero. And this isn't going to change. This is going to be true for all the types of functions. But it'll play out slightly different as we move through the different types of functions. It's easiest to find the intercepts on a polynomial. Right? It gets a little bit more difficult with rationals, a little bit more difficult with exponentials, a little bit more difficult with logs. For end behavior, we just talked about the end behavior of power functions. And when we get to example three, we're going to talk about the end behavior of polynomials. And we have a bunch of arrow options. Same thing we did, um, or same as we had for powers. It doesn't change for polynomials, but it severely changes as we move forward. Now, vertical asymptotes and holes, we don't have those in polynomials. All right, we, we really only have them in, in rational functions and some logs and some exponentials. We're not going to have them yet, so I'm going to put a pin in that and we're going to get to it later. The range always depends on your graph, right? So I need to actually look at the graph and say, okay, here my y values go from this low to this high. And keep in mind, intervals for both domain and range, they can contain parentheses or brackets or maybe some of each. All right, it's intervals of increasing and decreasing that only have parentheses, but domain and range can have each. It, or, or neither, or well, not nor, neither. They, they could have just parentheses, just brackets, or a combination. 
Um, and here's two typical graphs of some polynomials. This winds up being a quartic, right, degree four polynomial, and we'll talk about what a degree four polynomial is in example three. I can see both ends are up, so it's going to have a positive lead coefficient. And then this looks mostly like a cubic if I kind of scroll through this. And since the right end is up, I would also say it has a positive lead coefficient. Now, I do want to show you where you can access this, this file in Canvas. So let me go ahead, pull up my Canvas, and head into Files on the Course Navigation menu. Click on that. And then there's going to be a folder that's called Resources. So let's go in here. Right, we have some algebra resources, from some graph and calculator resources. But there's your, your family of functions and their traits. So if I click on this, a preview will pop up. Um, and you can kind of see right up in the corner. Um, you can't see the entire, let me scooch this over just a bit so you can see all of the information. But you can download it, or if you want, you can close this out. You can zoom in on this, all that fun stuff. So with that, I'm going to head over to the real example three, and we're going to get going on that. I'll see you in a few. Bye. Hey, Math 31. Welcome to the official beginning of example three. We just had the unofficial beginning. Uh, I want to look at polynomial functions. All right, and polynomial functions is just when I have many terms. All right, so I'm going to be adding a bunch of different power functions together. So let n be a non-negative integer. A polynomial function is a function that can be written in this form. And this looks super intimidating, but it's not too terrible. If you'll take note, right, we have x to the n, and then I would add the next term, which would be one power down, and then one power down, and then we get to the squared term, the linear term, and the constant. And a sub n is just the coefficient in front of the x, I'm sorry, the nth powered term. a sub 2 is the coefficient in front of the squared term a sub 1 is the coefficient in front of the linear term, and a sub 0 is the constant. And we typically write polynomials in descending power order. All right, this is called the general form of a polynomial function. We often rearrange the powers, oh, excuse me, the polynomials so that the powers are descending. All right, now I just want to get some, some terminology down. All right, so a sub n we call that the leading coefficient. So the lead number is just a sub n. The term as a whole, a sub n times x to the n, is called the leading term. And then n is the degree of your polynomial. All right, so whatever the highest degree term is, we call that the degree of your polynomial. So with that, we're going to take a look at an example and really just try and unpack all of these vocab terms. All right, so let me scooch this up so that we can see a little bit of, of this problem. I'm going to try and leave this definition in here. I might have to get, um, might have to lose it once we start working through all of these traits. So it says identify the degree, the leading term, the leading coefficient, and the end behavior of the polynomial 4x squared minus 6, excuse me, minus x to the 6th plus 2x minus 6. All right, so when I take a look at this polynomial, first of all, it is a polynomial. There's four terms in it. I'm going to rearrange these in descending powers of x. So I think I'm going to write my function. Actually, I have plenty of space. So let me write it out here so that we can see it. So f of x will be equal to, all right, my lead term would be negative x to the sixth. Uh, my next highest power, it looks like it is 4x squared. Then I have my linear term. Then I have my constant. All right, so there is my polynomial. And I have it written, again, in descending powers of x. So we call this quantity the lead term for a bunch of reasons. It's really the term that's driving this car, drive, steering the ship, whatever sentence or, or phrase you want to use. So here is my lead term, the whole thing together. My leading term is negative x to the sixth, and really the, the degree on that is degree six. So I could refer to this as a degree six polynomial. And because it has a, a degree six, or because this is a degree six polynomial, in later sections we'll learn about what that means in terms of how many x-intercepts it has, how many um, turning points and max and mins. So we'll pick up a whole lot of information just because this is a degree six polynomial. 
Now the lead term is this entire term, coefficient and power together. So the leading term is negative x to the six. The leading coefficient is a little bit different. The leading coefficient is just the number itself out in front of that high powered term. So what's the coefficient out here? It's negative one, okay? All right, now I'm gonna scooch this up because I do wanna talk about end behavior. All right, so end behavior, when it comes to end behavior of a polynomial, what you're going to do is you're going to find that lead term. And again, here's my leading term, right? This is the one, steer in the ship, leading term. And what we found out about polynomials is polynomials, these four terms, have the same end behavior as just this power function. And that's why we call this the leading term, because whatever the end behavior of this lead term would be, it would be the same end behavior for your polynomial function. So let's try and write up end behavior. And again, I wanna practice this in symbols. So let me scooch this up just a teeny bit more so I have a little bit more space. All right, so here we go. If I wanna talk about end behavior, we always wanna talk about as x goes left and as x goes right. All right, so you're always starting this, at least in symbols, for your end behavior. Now let me sketch a graph of this, just so I can get some feels. If I was gonna sketch a graph of this, the first thing I notice is that I have an even degreed polynomial, which means that my ends are gonna go the same direction, so either both up or both down, but I have a negative coefficient, so I know I'm gonna be looking something like this. Now this graph, does not have, or this function does not have this graph. This is a simplified version. Our graph is much more complicated than this, but I do know that the end behavior of this polynomial is the same as the end behavior of this power function. And so I see that both ends are down, which means f of x is headed to negative infinity both times out, right? My y values are headed down. So my x values are headed left, y is going down x is going right, y is going down. If I wanted to write this as arrows, I could write it this way. If I wanted it in words, I could write both ends down. All right, so the key takeaway here is that the end behavior of a polynomial has the same end behavior as its leading term. So we really wanna identify that leading term and figure out what the end behavior of the lead term, at least that if that was just its own power function, what would that end behavior be? Because it's gonna be the same for my polynomial. All right, so we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna practice it with an example, a slightly different setup than what we have here. I want you to see that we have the four terms already laid out here. It's gonna be slightly different in example four. All right, I'll see you in a bit, gang, bye.